two. Hey, it's Clutch at Off Grid Ohio. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is going to be our first episode of our gardening recipes series. Uh, today we're going to start off real easy. I only know easy things. Um, we're going to talk about uh, two tomato salads. Now, they're really easy to make. The key to the success is having the fresh ingredients. Um, I think you'll find, maybe I'll change, but you'll find that none of the recipes I do have actual written down recipes. I just, anything like that is too hard. So I just kind of go for it and you know, something that guys can do. Um, so this is real easy and they're really good. Guys, you can really impress your wife, your partners, uh, your girlfriends on a date. They're going to be amazed how you learned how to do this. Okay, so we're going to go over to the garden, pick some tomatoes and some herbs, then we're going to go out to the kitchen and uh, whip this up real quick. All right, let's go. So here's our garden. Uh, the funny thing about the tomatoes is I kind of let them go this year because I was doing a lot of YouTube videos and they were just vining out. I had little stakes and they were just vining out everywhere. It was a huge, like, just bird's nest mess. Um, then, fortuitously, a gopher or squirrel went in there a few days ago and the dogs went in there after it and just ripped up the whole thing and I thought I lost the whole tomato bed. But as I cleaned up some stuff and I lost some, you know, uh, plants, um, I realized I could try to save them. So what I did was I got these long, really sturdy stakes and these plants would never stand up on their own. So, but they're having big fruit because they were down on the ground and they didn't have to support the big fruit. Um, so I just tied them up and lo and behold, I've got like six foot plants. I mean, I'm five, ten, six foot plants um, with huge fruit. So I kind of stumbled upon this by accident and I'm going to do it again next year because it's the way to go, I think. Anyway, so here we go. We're going to cut some tomatoes. These are heirloom tomatoes. Oh, funny thing about the word heirloom, um, you know, we also have tangerine orchards beyond these trees and they're heirloom tangerines, meaning they have seeds. And a lot of people complain about the seeds. I don't like the seeds, yada, yada, but you know what? That's natural. That's organic. Anything that doesn't have seeds or any apple that doesn't turn brown, I mean, that's frankenfruit. Right? It's been genetically modified to not have seeds or not go bad and who knows what that's going to do to you. So I always say heirloom and seeds are good because you know it's mother nature, it's natural. And uh, all right, that's my heirloom thing. I'm not gonna really cut this and do the video at the same time, but I'm gonna try. One, I need a lot. I have different types, those are heirloom. These are big boys, they're not quite ready. Maybe that one's ready. See. Oh, never plant cherry tomatoes with your other tomatoes because they're super viney and they, that's one of the huge problems that I had. Those guys got everything tangled. These are some big ones. I thought they were going to fall off, so I put them on the stool, but I'm going to cut them off now. This one's overripe, but it will be fine. Let's see, I think I'm going to save some for the 4th of July weekend. Oh, there's a big one down there. Let's get that one. Oh, my dad's coming up. I'm excited. Okay. Oh yeah, these mutant pumpkin pet guys. Hey, let's do a quick tour. Oh wait, before we do that, let's go to the garden. So this is the herb box. Um, the recipes, one calls for the tomato salad for thyme. So I have English thyme and French thyme and one other type. I think we'll go with the French. So let's just get some, just one of these is probably good enough for when I'm the demonstration. And the key ingredient to the other one is lemon basil, which is this stuff. Let's just get a few, one. It's really the leaves that we're after. Okay, two. You're going to need a lot more if you want to do uh, a lot more, but you know, triple if you're going to do more than one serving. Okay, so around the garden. Leave this here. Oh, sorry, it's a little messy. All right, these are the blueberries. Um, they really produce for me enough. Every day I can come here and get enough for my yogurt. They're really good. Really good. Really sweet. Those are the artichokes. They're done this year. 
We got a ton of them, and that's money on trees, $2.99 for an artichoke, or $1.99. So this is what happens if you don't pick them, they bloom, that was the artichoke. So you gotta get them before they flower. What they do is they come up with the main stalks and you cut those, and these secondary stalks start coming up and you get another harvest. So you get about, I don't know, maybe 10 on each plant. We got three, so maybe 30 artichokes this year. There's some more tomatoes, cilantro, it's getting away, garlic, chives, which we'll use. Strawberries are under there somewhere. Um, these are boysenberries. They're really good. They're just, I just planted these, but they're really sweet. Really good. Oh my God, so good. It's a mandarin orange. Those we'll kind of used to get in those cans. And they're coming out, these little mandarin oranges. Um, it's a, a dwarf grapefruit, pink grapefruit plant. It's low hanging fruit, the definition of. Um, peach, I just planted, I don't expect fruit on that for another year maybe. Apple is right there, some corn. This got devastated. Um, I just tried to, something broke in and got my cabbage and broccoli and it's a lot of beets. You can see the beets there. Um, and they got most of my good stuff. That was uh, broccoli and cabbage right there. All of them, pretty much. Um, oh well, I guess an excuse not to eat vegetables. Um, oh, the sundial. So this is the sundial. It's pretty amazing how this thing works all the time. So what time is it right now? It is 6.15. So if you look at this, you can read this, I guess here's 6, 15, and that's 7. So this thing is headed, it's amazing. I, it's off an hour during daylight saving time, obviously, but it's pretty amazing, I have to say. Um, also, you can look at it this way. This is the point of it. So, um, maybe not. This is the 15, what time is it, 17. 617 maybe, but you can see it right there. Anyway, enough. All right, so that's the uh, garden part. We will go ahead and get to the kitchen and we'll be right back. All right, so now we're in the kitchen. I feel like I'm Julia Child or something, Julia Child. Um, so this is super easy. Um, I learned this recipe at, um, in Italy, actually, these recipes at um, a cooking school that we did when we were on a business trip. They always try to throw in these like, little activities. Um, it happened to be at the Four Seasons Milan. Oh, and I have a funny story, I guess, because I always remember, we rolled into that cooking class straight from going out, like in the morning. So we were kind of hung. And uh, so the only thing I remember is this dish. It's super easy and it's super good. But we also did a, a red kind of fish dish and a lasagna. Not lasagna, uh, uh, oh, the blanching the tomatoes. So the first step um, in the, the dish is to blanch tomatoes. And hopefully you got fresh homegrown tomatoes. If you've never had them, uh oh, this one's split. So if they split, it's probably already too late if you had them in there too long. So blanching the tomatoes is just to get the skin off. Um, that's the part that I guess you don't notice it, but in, like in a restaurant, in a really good Italian restaurant, they'll do that and it just makes all the difference in not having that skin on. So that's what, we, that's what I just did. So I put these two tomatoes in there and they're a little hot. I'm gonna, just, the skin should just peel right off like this. Okay. And so you do that, get a fork here, and uh, you probably want to do about eight tomatoes for like four people. Um, so you take the skin off, it's a little hot and stuff. Um, the, the, the skin comes off really easy. But you still want the tomato to be raw inside. You don't want it to be a boiled tomato that you're making tomato sauce. So. Anyway, so we went out the night before we you know, did our meeting. And uh, I was with a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, E. What's up, E? We call E the CEO, which means Chief Entertainment Officer. So we normally go out when we're on, out, out, of, out of the country. We don't you know, go out at home. Anyway, he says, we're going out. I said, oh, I'm tired, you know, but I'll go out for a drink, you know, what the hell, we're in the line. Um, 
So we got a group of people together and, oh, Andrew, I'm still not letting you off the hook on this one. You said you'd go and, and you bailed on us. Anyway, so I said, all right, I'll go for one drink. So we get in the car, go, you know, we're driving out somewhere. And it's far and like, E, like, where are we going? You know, and then we go into this like big park, which is like Central Park in Milan. And it's dark and, you know, wooded. And I'm like, where are we going? There's no club in this park. It was just chill relax and I'm like, okay. And so we drive a little bit more in the park and we come into this clear and it's like a Disney movie. I don't know which movie that is, but there's like this crystal palace is what it looks like. And there's lights coming out of it. It's like all crystal and all these beautiful people and cars, fancy cars and music and boom, boom. I'm like, oh my God, like, this is happening. So there's this huge line and I'm like, E, we are not going to wait in that line. Just don't worry, I got this. I'm like, so he's connected. If you need help, let me know. Um, so anyway, uh, we go out and down the back through this like garden and the side door and there's a bouncer there and of course he knows and we get right in. He takes us to this, the best table in the club. Like, the DJ is like right here and our table is like right here. We're all roped off and I'm like, oh my god. And I look at E and I say, we're not just staying for one drink, are we? And he goes, nope. And I said, okay, I just wanted to you know, understand what we're, what we're in for here. So consequently, we had a great time that night and rolled straight into the Four Seasons Milan cooking class and went to the So I got a story for everything. So this is a really easy dish. It requires just the tomatoes blanched, which we're doing now. And all of these cool. So the next ingredient we picked in the garden were the herbs. So the thyme goes with the second recipe and a lemon basil goes with this recipe. So here's a lemon basil. Um, so, it doesn't work, and you probably won't find lemon basil in the store. I've never seen it, but I don't really look for it because I grew up I've never seen it. Um, you probably need to go to like your local garden store and just get a little plant. You can put it in your windowsill, you don't have to have a big garden. And most herbs you can do that, you don't have to buy them. But um, this is like one of the best herbs ever because it really tastes like lemon. Like, I can't explain it. And it with the tomato, it's Amazing, actually, mistake. The lemon basil goes with the other dish, the thyme goes with it. Okay, so, thyme. So like when I first was doing this, I was trying to pull these leaves off and like, they're really hard to get off, you know, like I pull them one at a time. And I realized that if I pull them the other direction, they come right off. So the trick of this is, if they're cut hard to get off, turn the thing around and pull it the other way, and they'll come right off. Otherwise, you're pulling them off one leaf at a time, which is, you know, I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not down for this. If you go down to up, it's really hard. Up to down, very easy. So I'm just getting the leaves off at the time. You don't need a lot of it. Um, but, you know, fresh is better because it just has so much flavor. It just starts losing flavor as soon as it's picked. So, we don't need a ton of this. We got these cool little dishes that I got in Budapest. Uh, they're famous for their little green porcelain. Um, we can do a, a, a video on Eastern Europe. I think Budapest, Prague, and Berlin are probably three good cities to meet together. And they're so different. Um, Berlin's really exciting, and Prague is like fairy tale, never got wrong, and Budapest is real gritty. Um, I, I love Budapest. Some great hotels, and the river runs right through the city. It's actually two cities, Buda and Pesh. I bet you didn't know that. I got these dishes on the Pesh side. Um, so, the other ingredient to this is lemon zest. Does anybody know what that is? But you need a zester. Zester, voila. You can use like a fine cheese grater or something, but you gotta wash the lemon and then get the, the zest is the skin. So you just get a little zest going, and you know, you can always add more, so I just start by just doing a little bit, depending on how big the salad is, and then add more if it doesn't have enough flavor, because everybody's different. Right, so there's the lemon zest, there's the thyme. We might as well have the lemon basil for the other dish. Okay, so this is super easy. 
Um, you don't even have to write it down. Um, also good to get really good olive oil. Olive oil is like wine now. It does go bad. You can't have olive oil in your cupboard for like months or a year. It's not good. I mean, you can still use it, but it's, it tastes not good. So there's a great olive oil store in town, by the way, in the main arcade area. Carolina, she, I think she's from you know, Switzerland, but she speaks Italian too. Uh, I lived in Italy on an AFS exchange student program when I was 15 and 16. So, io parlo italiano molto bene. This is probably why I like travel so much. So, the key to a uh, good presentation is making sure that the um, chunks of tomatoes are cut kind of like in a uniform shape and size. If they're all different sizes, it looks kind of mishmashy. Presentation is very important, um, especially with a simple dish like this. So the blanching worked really well. I'm able to get the skin off super easy, and the tomato was soft on the outside, but still raw on the inside. So, um, you need a sharp knife. I'm sure you've all tried to cut a tomato with a dull knife. It doesn't work. This is not my best knife. I have this knife I got at the Chikichi Fish Market in Tokyo. I mean, it is so sharp, it'll cut you just looking at it. So here are the blanched tomatoes. I'm just going to make two here. And uh, we'll cut them into little cubes. This one was the one that was cracked. Once it's the skin starts to crack, it's too, you left them in too long, it's too late, sorry. I would say maybe a minute, a minute and a half, depending on the size of the tomato. Okay, so there are our tomato blanched pieces. And you add thyme. And you add a lemon zest. You add all that. That is it. I don't even add salt and pepper, but you can if you're a salt and pepper person, but it doesn't really need it. And so that is the dish. It is a beautiful dish too, presentation wise, if you can keep the time to bring it over there. Try not to get all the lemon splatters over there. So there's the dish. It's very delicate and very good. That's the key, right? So let's try these heirloom tomatoes. We're talking about heirloom tomatoes. It's this one. And uh, so, again, this is only two ingredients. This is just a tomato and a lemon basil. You could end up the right three, sorry, the olive one. You could, again, add salt and pepper, which I don't. So the, with these, I would suggest maybe just making one per serving like this. This is a big tomato. And just all you do is make it look pretty. So you make a little design. You know, everyone's different. And with your lemon basil. I know you're saying this is not going to be good. This is too easy. But I'm telling you, less is a more. I have a good story about less is more. I have stories for you. Less is more. I used to uh, work with the Versace family. And I said that to the wife one day. And she goes, David, less is enough more. Less is a less. Always remember that. And I said, gotcha. Less is a less. OK, so this is the other one. I know it's uh, um, all of those, a little bit. And here is your tomato lemon basil. I'm telling you, this is amazing. All right, so that is our first episode of the uh, garden recipe series. Um, we're going to do a lot of cool, literally, garden to mouth recipes that you can do very simple and delicious. You don't have to buy frankenfruit, 
or vegetables or super healthy. Um, let's see what else. Okay, that's it for now. Um, I wanted to let you know I'm working hard on the Rwanda video. Thanks so much for uh, watching the longer videos. I'm super excited about the comments. Um, the next Rwanda video, we're going to get a little bit more into the country and the politics and you know, what happened there. Hotel Rwanda, check out that movie. I didn't talk about the Killing Fields movie. It's unfortunate that the, the guy in the movie, the photographer, you know, after all of that, you know, got killed in LA. Uh, you know, there's still a conspiracy theory whether the Cambodians came and got him or whether he was just killed by you know, violent crime. But um, that's kind of sad. He made it through all of that just for that to happen. But we'll do more about uh, Cambodia and this uh, topic when we do the Golden Triangle. Uh, I've got so much content, um, you know, possible ones, and let me know, you know, which ones you're interested in. I'm thinking about Israel, Jordan, Japan. We just talked about Prague, Budapest, and Berlin. Uh, the big three in Europe, of course, Italy, France, and England. Those are just not one video. We'll probably just do those by city. Uh, Bhutan, uh, Peru, uh, Ibiza, the Seychelles, South Africa. Uh, so many destinations. I mean, I've got destinations about domestically that we can do, uh, dude ranches, uh, spas, Mexico. Mexico, is, I love Mexico. We'll do a whole thing on Mexico. So I'm super excited for the travel. I'm going to just kind of spread it out though because it's really not a travel channel per se, but it seems like that's what everyone wants and likes. Um, but I want to you know, keep it balanced with uh, Ojai off grid travel and just kind of fun current event discussion. Um, all right, um, oh, speaking of which, I wanted to just give a shout out to Kai. I saw that you uh, posted a, a comment on the Tanzania video, and I know you've been working real hard with some charities in Sierra Leone to build some schools, and I'd love to get in, involved with you on that. Um, you know, I always say everybody has ideas, but it's, you know, who executes, who gets off their butt and actually gets something done, you know, so. Um, I'd love to partner with you on that and you know, save and help some, some, some lives. You know, the, the future is the kids, um, and I firmly believe that, so I'm in with you 100%. Let's see what we can do. Thanks for supporting the channel, and I'm going to do an extra special job for Rwanda for you, Kai. Thank you so much. All right, this is Clutch at Off Grid Ohio. Out.